The Perimeter is brought to you in partnership with Speak Studios. Speak Studios. Speak and be heard. The Perimeter with Adam Morrison is brought to you by our official title sponsor, Mercedes-Benz of Spokane. Experience the best or nothing at Mercedes-Benz of Spokane with Dan Crowley and his exceptional team. They're located in beautiful Liberty Lake and his local family-owned dealership under Guy Automotive. Their staff prides itself on a personable and memorable experience from service to sales and will have you leaving the dealership feeling satisfied with a smile on your face all the way down the road. Back-to-back winners of the Best of the Best Civil Laurel Award. Receive invoice pricing on any new Mercedes-Benz in stock when you come in and mention the Perimeter Podcast. You can check out all their available inventory at SpokaneMercedes.com as well as stay up to date on all things Mercedes-Benz via their Facebook and Instagram pages. Call them at 509-455-9100 to schedule your Mercedes test drive today. Warning, language may not be suitable for all ages. All right, here we are. Joel AIE, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I got to go over some of your accolades. All-American this year. Congrats. WCC first team. Congrats. Tourney MVP last year. What else did I forget? Um, Did I forget anything? I think that's it, to be honest. I had a a bunch of honorable mentions. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm not the guy who always was. I know. I'm just saying, you know, how there's like the US BWA yeah. and all that. So, you know, like all <laughs> yeah. district teams, I forget anything. There's, no, 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 no. There's ones that never was on there. All right. Well, let's get started. Career's officially done at Gonzaga, declared for the draft. First thoughts, how do you feel about it? Obviously, you feel good about it, but like, just I want to hear how you feel about it. Um, It was, for some reason, it was a mixed feeling. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like I prep, I prepare myself, you know, to that for that time where I know at some point I have to go, and uh, I know that time is the perfect time, is the right time to do it. I have no, um, you know, I don't feel like I have any regrets. I think I've I've done almost everything I could done yeah. um, here at Gonzaga. Obviously, you know, um, mixed feelings because I have a heavy heart. I mean, Gonzaga has been so so good to me over the years that it's like, wow, now it's officially gone. Like last year, I put my name in there, but. I kept my options of coming back yeah. and I always felt like um, at some point I would be back. But this year it's really like, I'm done. I mean, you know, May 1st, I'll be out of here. And yeah. um, this is just how it is. It's a new chapter. So I feel great because I'm super excited about what's next. And that's literally what I've been dreaming about. But yeah, obviously, you know, when you leave a place where you spend so much time, there's yeah. always a part of your heart that is like. I think you're ready, obviously. And you've done your research. What part of this in the season, what time of the year did you did you know that you're going to go? Because by my junior year, about halfway through, I was like, I'm, I'm going yeah. no matter what happens. Uh, to be completely honest, that's something that I've thought about since I said I was coming back last year. Last year. Okay. Um, I think that last year, I don't think I was that far. Um, you know, talking to teams and, uh, you know, looking back to the draft and who was drafting where and uh, the opportunities that were – given to some of the players that have that were in my range or that were bringing the same thing as me on the table. Um, sometimes I would watch NBA games and I'm like, wow, like maybe I could have fit in, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but again, with no regrets, not like, oh, I wish I was gone. Not at all because we were having a great season. But, you know, starting last year, um, when I said I was coming back, I just told myself, okay, now you're going to put into work and you basically get an extra year to get better. Um, you don't want to be in the same spot, you know? Mm-hmm as you were last year, that's the reason you came here, obviously, um, on an individual plan because we were obviously trying to win a championship as a team. But so, you know, during the year, I kind of knew that um, I would be gone. Um, it was a high, you no, know, a good chance that I would be gone next yeah. year. But uh, like you said, you know, halfway through the year, I was just like, okay, I felt like I kind of took my game to another level. And even though there were some times where I wasn't able to show it, I just knew myself by, you know, all those workouts that you put in. And um, I kind of knew, okay, I think I'm ready to go. And uh, by the end of the year, the time will definitely be right. Yeah. I mean, I, my, my my situation was similar. I had a good sophomore year like you did. Put my name in, got some info, got yeah. the right info. Okay, what do I got to work on? Did that, came back, felt really good about the season. And then, yeah, about halfway through for myself, it was like, yeah, I'm out of here. Really you know what I'm saying? And, sure. the, and obviously, you're still focused on the team yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I know 
you don't have to clarify. We know that oh, as, yeah, yeah. as fans watching 100%. you, but, um, there's a time when you're like, yeah, man, it's time to, you know, like I like the phrase you used, turn the chapter, new chapter yeah. and, and elevate your career to a different, uh, place. Um, so let me ask you this. If you guys won, would you come back or was this, no, I'm done, uh, I'm done nah. for sure. It would have not, it would have probably, been, it. probably yeah. been like, yeah, I can't go now for sure. Yeah. yeah okay, I think that makes if sense. anything, it would have like, make me feel even better about it, yeah. you know? being able to bring the national championship and then, you know, everybody can turn the page, you know, but, uh, yeah, I think if anything, he would have made me feel better about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit later in the conversation, but you're the elevate, you know, the, the way you elevated your game through the four years was fantastic. And, yeah. you know, obviously, you know, I call the games and, uh, you know, the, the, the way you've improved yourself year by year has, has been pretty, pretty cool, honestly. Yeah, so um, I don't want to embarrass you early here in the conversation, <laughs> but, um, you know, I was always singing your praises cause it was always, you know, Joel got better. Oh, Joel looks stronger. Joel looks faster. And it was year by year by year. Yeah. So it was fantastic. And you had a great season you. and, you know, I'm excited for you. Um, you know, going to the draft and stuff. It's Appreciate a fun you. time in your life, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah probably got a lot of things going on now sure. that's time to be an adult you know what i'm saying yeah. so you know like, moving paying bills 100 all it's that like, stuff that's and that's something that is like exciting to me but i feel like every every young kid you know kind of has like not fears but you're like there's something that you discover like paying bills and like you better pay your bills on time yeah. you know oh yeah and um, me for example you know the first thing i, I learned was okay now i have a debit card and I have to pay my own uh, phone bill, for example. Uh -huh. So I got here in the U.S. and I remember the f second day I got here, you know, B Mike takes me to uh, mm -hmm. T-Mobile, you know, to get my phone. And my English was like, I w I didn't understand exactly what was going on. I just knew I was gonna get a phone. And you know, in France, I think phone bill is like well, like twenty five euro, you know, something like that. So. So we go and he's like, yeah, like he's talking to the lady and he's like, yeah, so you want like a limited plan for like, I think it was like damn near like 70 or like a hundred with the phone that, with the new phone I was going to mm -hmm. get. And me not knowing exactly what was going on, I just said, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, give, give it, it to you me, know, absolutely. Just limited, like unlimited, like in France, I have unlimited, it's not that expensive, just unlimited. And he's like, you sure? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think he himself was like, okay, like, you know, you only get 420 a month. So, like, Better that's make a quarter. stretch right, right exactly. there. Yeah, absolutely. And me, I was like, yeah, yeah. And and then I understood. I was like, okay, I get that amount of money. I need to pay every month that amount of money to pay my phone bill and my mm -hmm. phone. And then I started putting, you know, some little routines. Okay, you, this, I've never been a big spender, so that, you know, that helped me. But it's like you will have to go get food like because the car closed at like at 10 p.m. after your workout there's no cog you have to find something you guys still call it the cog like, yeah it's still the cog all right <laughs> we had the, we didn't have training table when i was playing so uh, yeah we had to go get lucky charms and pizza at like yeah. 9 p.m. every night you see but like <laughs> at 9 p.m. it's like okay i lived in Duceau, so caruso and like all the stuff water across the street but a bunch of time it had to be mcdonald's like yeah, yeah. Domino's cuz this was open and yeah. You can't spend too much money and so like you said you know paying all those bills and stuff like i had like a couple bad months where i'm like wow like i'm in a red because overdraw you know exactly you know i, <laughs> I that day I, ju I just need new shoes so i bought new shoes and like i need to make all my calculation and maybe my calculation went wrong you know mm -hmm. and so i'm like okay how do i make sure that it doesn't happen the next time because otherwise it gets worse and worse so you know i had my my first experience about it and since i learned i learned a lot in the four years but like you said you know it's like now it's I mean, the real bills exactly, and stuff. You know, yep. The rent and electricity. So it's like, wow. it's going to be interesting. And I think I'll be ready, but obviously it's something new. So like, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting for sure. It's a, it's an interesting part of time in your life. And you know, the best advice I give you just quickly is just get a good financial advisor. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know everybody's told you that. And, and you know, the guys, the staff at Gonzaga will help you with that. And I'm sure your agent yeah. will help you with that, but it's just get somebody that you trust and look after your own stuff too. get a second party. Yeah. That helps. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Somebody that's yeah. blind that he doesn't know is going to exactly. look at the same stuff just so you, just in case. Yeah. And it's crazy. Cause you know, you were talking about how, when did you understood that you were going to be gone? And, mm -hmm. and for me, that's since I knew since last year, kind of as the goal at least was to be gone next year. Yeah. Um, you know, I just, 
put my mind into it and like how can I you know um, make money with my money how can I make sure you know like I said all the bills are played what type of routines I yeah. can put on and um, what will I need when I go so this year you know and I didn't have that much classes because um, I could have graduated last year I just had life schedule so yeah. I had a bunch of time to like learn as much as I could about it and it was that's to me, it was like all my free time. I was like, okay, like how can I use that time to make sure that next year, smart, I don't have that. Like, oh, I take a slap in the face because I don't know who say, he's supposed to take care of that, but I'm losing money, all the yeah. stuff, you know. And um, that's why I was like, like you said, you know, financial advisor, all the stuff. I was like, okay, I need to know myself as much as I can, because you know, once you're in the like NBA career, like you don't, do you want to learn about all the stuff? Like to be honest, not really. It's not too, really. It's maybe too late, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I have this time. I don't have that much school. I might as well, you know, start grabbing as much information as I can. And, you know, like you said, then I'll be like ready. But like I said, there is still a lot of things that you don't know because you're not there yet. Yeah. So you can only learn as much as you know. So, um, but I'm I'm ready to, you know, I'm excited to like be able to prepare myself and like to not be completely blinded and have, okay, you just take care of all that. And so you finished school. What'd you, would you, yeah. would you major in? What'd uh, you get your degree in? I had sports management. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. And I was like, cause you know, at first I was like, okay, maybe, you know, later I'll be an agent or something like that. And to yeah. be honest with you, I tried business, but like my first semester, I couldn't do business at school. I, I was, was so, it was a language barrier. Yeah. 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 Cause the language barrier, I was yeah. like, there is no way I can go through like all these things. So I had to go, you know, and Right now, if I were starting like college right now, I would I would go and I, did, like, I had the same you know? thought. But it's thought like process. me, I wasn't as good, like to be like I I had to understand I would not survive in the business classes and like if like those American students like have those difficulties, like I have to first learn all the language yeah. and stuff. And it's funny because I was doing a bunch of stuff in France already, but the language barrier was like so huge. Yeah, it's too difficult. That, like, I mean, especially at a university like Gonzaga. I mean, it's yeah, already hard enough as it is. So. Exactly. I was like, oh, let, let's be like honest with you know with yourself and just chill. Well, out, wise you know? decision. Sports yeah. management buddies. Exactly. There we go. Did like you? That. Who'd you have to do? Did you do your practicum and all that stuff? Uh, yeah, I did my. Uh, who'd you do it with? I had Barry. <laughs> You did it with Barry? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I, like, it's, it's I just, crafty right there. <laughs> That's crafty. There that was go. a smart choice. I wow. was like, I was like, I knew I couldn't do it with like George and like our team. It's obviously too much to uh -huh. ask, but I was like, maybe I can ask Barry, you know. Oh yeah. I'll be around the team anyway. Barry's such a good guy. Bar like, Barrett yeah. Henderson, for people listening, is yeah. our SID, great guy, good uh good dude. So Joel's crafty exactly. in that that decision right there. <laughs> I think I did Mike Nielsen. I don't know if you know Mike, yeah, but he yeah, was yeah. the Same strength thing. coach before. And so he, he Super gave me the, too. hey, come in and I love clean it. some weights and stuff <laughs> and, you know, sweep. Hey. And I, and, you know, and I actually did the work. I mean, I did the work, but it, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's obviously, it was harder. Like, you know, some people go and do some way harder job than I did. Yeah. Obviously, I'm aware of that. But at the same time, I mean. Yeah, you're you playing know, and stuff. Like, exactly, we're not, yeah. So. Like, no, nobody nobody at Gonzaga is giving anybody free pass. Let me, yeah, let's, let's, let me put that out there. But also, like, some people understand the, the strenuous schedule yeah, that you have and, exactly. and, and stuff like that. And, you know, the sports management stuff is kind of, it's not self-explanatory, but if you get some basic experience, it, it's it'll suffice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you get 100%. out. Um, all right. Let's talk about before Gonzaga. Just give me kind of your family history. Yeah. You're born in Bordeaux, right? Yep. Who's your favorite club, soccer club? Just real quick. It if you say PSG, be. I'm going to just be like, <laughs> okay. are you like the Yankees too and nah, the I Cowboys? Like, you know I'm, what I'm saying? I'll, I'll have to be 100% honest. This, my hometown is my favorite club. I used to go to the stadium. Oh, okay. Uh, I think when I was seven or eight, they won the league. Uh -huh. and, I mean, my dad would take me every Saturday to the state. Like, it's a good league, too. The yeah. French league is good. It's yeah. kind of a developmental league, but exactly. it's the higher of those. Yeah, 100%. And, and, you know, on the international scene, I grew up to support PSG because I'm French. I would love yeah, a French Yeah, no, club. I know. I'm just giving you a... Yeah, yeah. I will not be like... There's a lot of people, and, you know, with my friends, we always talk about it. Though, you were not supporting PSG <laughs> when they were that bad, like, 10 years ago. Yeah. So I'll admit, I was not a fan of PSG that time, but they're our best shot at having the French club winning it. So I'm 100% You think Mbappe it. is going to go to Madrid? He's got to. I, he has you know, to. Ex, um, you know, I, he has to go play I, in a yeah. better league. Even that's though you guys are doing well in Champions League. I'm yeah. a Chelsea guy. I've been Chelsea okay, guy yeah, since yeah. Drogba. Okay, so yeah, let me yeah. throw the make, to make sure everybody knows. <laughs> no, not when Pulisic came. Yeah. American, but he's good. Um, but, yeah, you guys, he's got to play in a better league. Like, to me, it's like, you know that what I'm saying? would be the next step for him, yeah. 100%. 
but you know, obviously, I'm French. I would love to have him. He's Thierry Henry 2.0, in my yeah. opinion. Yes. I'm right? like, I just think he's so like good, and like he has so much room to improve too. Like Thierry Henry was a dog. Like I have a I have a Thierry Henry story that is still hurts me to this day. So you know, Roni Terioff. Yeah. Okay, French. Mm-hmm. The, you know, local uh, same connection. Played at Gonzaga with me. Played for the Lakers. So when I was in LA, um, we play a game. I can't remember who it was. It was a regular season game. You know, I get in my car, go home. My buddy Luke Walton calls me. He's like, "Dude, where the fuck you at?" I'm like, "I'm home." He goes, "Dude, Roni is walking around with Thierry Henry with a bag full of jerseys, and he's sign- he's just like going up to like you know the yeah. players and like people behind, and he was like sign- translating for him, and then he was sign- personalizing and handing out jerseys." And so I was like, "You're full of shit," because I'm you know yeah, big soccer no guy. Way. Get get on the plane the next day. Luke's sitting there like this with a fucking jersey on. Jersey on. Thierry Henry and I'm like I was fucking sick. I'm still sick That's about it. Like painful. I could have had a, a personalized Thierry Henry jersey. That's um, tough. Yeah, he was one of my all times. Yeah. I saw him play um, when he was still with Barca. They played um, the Galaxy when they had Beckham, but it was Messi, Eto, Xavi, Iniesta. Everybody. Thierry Henry and they oh, yeah. played in the Rose Bowl in just like yeah. a, a the exhibition, game. yeah. And it was it was insane. It was like yeah. ninety four thousand people. It was insane. Like, it was awesome. And Beckham scored a free kick goal. It was cool. Messi should have scored. Got he had a breakaway or like a through ball, missed it anyway. Yeah. But uh, we better get off the soccer topic, yeah. or everybody's gonna turn their podcast <laughs> off here real quick. Yeah. So yeah, tell me about you know just tell me about your your life growing up before you got to Incept or when you're coming into Incept. And so, can you explain what INSEP means? Yeah, so INSEP is basically the Insti- National Institute for Sport and uh, Physical Expertise. So, okay. you know, it's like maybe 30, 30 plus sports, um, athletes from maybe like 12 or like 15 to like whatever it is you are. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, we just walk around like some like high known mm-hmm. like French athlete, like, you know, some like Olympic champs, world champs. So it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, obviously, French is a smaller country, so we have the opportunity to do that. I don't think it would work in the U.S. Well, it's nationalized, too. That, yeah. Right. Also, okay, like, yeah. Literally, like, the government pays. Yeah, like, yeah. So, like, you go there for free. Um, you don't pay for anything. Um, and uh, it's like a $60,000 scholarship. And um, you just go to school there. Uh, it's, yeah. it's a closed campus. It's actually a closed campus. Really? Yeah. And I was surprised when I went to Gonzaga. I thought like... It was closed? Campus, yeah, yeah. I was, was like, like, oh, no you can, you can go up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can leave. So, yeah. I was like, okay, like, are we on campus? And so it's a closed campus. And, um, you know, you have buildings for like medics. You have um, school. You have the gym. You have the um, tennis court, mm-hmm. the soccer field. Really, it's like an insane facility, insane facility. And uh, you basically walk for a minute to the gym, walk to another minute to your class, walk to another minute to your room, a minute to the, the cafeteria. And um, so to go there. Um, so yeah, how'd you get picked to yeah. go there? So how old were you, like 12 or start, something? Yeah, it's the whole process kind of started around 11. And yeah. um, so I went to that regional academy. So it's basically a regional INSEP. And um so they take the 10, 10 best player every year, and it's on a two year, so it's 11 and 12, or 12 and 13. And so I went there actually a year early. They took me with a earlier generation, and uh, I spent three years there instead of two. And then it, being in those, like, centers allow you to then do all those, like, um, selections in mm-hmm. order to play in your um, – a bigger region, like uh, three regions, go together, and the best, the eight best, play, the eight best, best players pro, of the three yeah. region play a tournament against the whole the whole country, and then they pick thirty players out of this tournament to go do like a detection, and then they bring you in the, in the campus. Same thing, you spend a whole week, and you know they kind of analyze like who goes to bed. It's kind of like army. They're you know they trying to kind of scare you and make you understand like <laughs> here we work hard. Like yeah. Like, when I say, like, hey, like, you have to run, even if it's two-step. I remember, like, one of the scary times for me was, like, we're all in a circle around the coach, and coach said, yeah, Joel, you go there. And, you know, I walk because I do. Yeah, I had to do two steps, literally two steps. And he says, like, okay, everybody go 10 push-ups. <laughs> and then he said, Joel, and I have to jog for, like, two, two steps. Se- you know? Two steps. And, you know, what it's like, fuck? exactly, everybody is scared, and, you know. And um, so once you make it, they, they announce, like, 12, 12, you know, 10 to 12 every year mm-hmm. um, to go to INSEP. And um, so my first year, for example, Killian was in his last year. And uh, it's 
on three generations. So like for me, it was when I got here it was the ninety eight born, ninety nine born, and two thousand. Oh, okay, that's why Kylian was in his last year, and um, and yeah, it's like it's a it's a so, year two year process maybe. So are you like? You waking up and doing like, because I know the European model is different for when I yeah. played over there. You practice in the morning, then you practice at night. But it's like lift in the morning, skill work or like agility, and then you practice yeah, as a team at 100%. night. Is that how it was? Yeah. And then school in between or was so it like, school before practice? Yeah. The typical day would be school at like 745. So you wake up maybe at like 7, we'll get breakfast. Then you go to class 745 until 1030. 10 30 you do 45 minute lift 45 minute agility, skill work, skill work. Yep. you go get lunch and then you have two hours of school again and mm-hmm. then you have the like two hour thirty, two hour three hours practice you know two hour thirty and then you go back home you get your um you get some food and some nights you have to go to study hall for an hour yeah and so we start at 7 45 your day in at like 10 p.m oh yeah i'm sure like, you know they uh. check your room at 10 p.m you have to be in your room and you can't get out of here yeah, but you're probably exhausted by then anyway. Exactly. You know what I mean? The only like, thing you want to do is sleep. go lay in bed. And, yes. Like, I didn't have a TV. I didn't have a PlayStation. I was just like, you know, when I go home, I'm I'm asleep. And it's interesting because at 10 p.m., you have to be in your room. And like, mm-hmm. So there is no, like, go get extra shots or, like. Oh, that's you interesting. Know, you, can, you cannot go at, like, 1 a.m. Like, I used to do it, but I used to, like. Basically, when I leave the gym, I'm like, after the practice, I will leave a window open. Mm-hmm. And like, so I can just go at night. You go and like, a couple of times I got caught, but like, I just became friend with like, the people Janitor working there. Janitor or something, yeah. yeah. Smart. And, um, so we would just go and be able to get some shots up. But, you know, at some point they realized we we're doing it. So they would put, you know, something on the door says like, yeah, if anybody is seen after hours, <laughs> you will get kicked out of it, you know? Yeah. And it's like, whoa. And you're like, I'm trying to get better. You know I'm trying to get better yeah. by doing, but you know liabilities if you get hurt. So I kind of understand the whole process, and that's why I'm like, it's that's something that's so different from yeah. like here. You know, like yeah, everybody's like, like gym rat man. Exactly, you gotta get extra shots exactly. up, and like people they look at you love, funny if they if you don't. If you don't, people yeah. would love to see you like I want to. Yeah, they'd be like up, absolutely. You know? and, yeah. and so I was like, that's crazy because that's you know we did not grow up in that culture of like gym rats. Mm-hmm. But me looking up to like all that, I'm like, dang it, like. I wish I could just, you know, freely go down there. I didn't have to, like, yeah. escape. And, like, so that was interesting. But, like, it worked out well, you know. I didn't so who who do you guys play? Do you play other academies yeah. there? Like high schools, quote, unquote? So. Or do you, is it all international stuff, too? So there is two teams. And there okay. is the first team is the the first generation, like, the first year. So me, the 2000 born. You play in under 18 level. So you oh, okay. play against other high school, other academies, yeah. like high school. And then the second and third year play in third division. We don't oh, win the a game third, all year. Yeah, the third division pro, yeah. the French league. And okay. you don't win a game all year. You lose by like 40, 50. When yeah, you're, you playing, grown, t- you're yeah. playing grown men. Exactly. You you're lose a- by 20, you're fine. Yeah. You score six points a Jeez. game, you're happy. <laughs> like, it's like... Well, you guys are, what, 15, 16, 16 17, years yeah. old playing so against like, grown men trying yeah. to make it up to a different division. Exactly. Of course, so they're going to kick the shit out of you It's like, guys. sometimes, you know, you just go on the road and you lose by 16. And, yeah. uh, you know, nobody's surprised. And, and you know, like, <laughs> that's why, like, you lose by 20. You're happy, kind of. You're like, yeah. okay, I was in the game, kind of. So, you know, I played a couple of games where we were, like, Right here, you know, we maybe came to the last shot, we missed a shot, and you know. But if you win, is you run around and you're just, just the happiest kid on earth because absolutely. you've been losing for two straight years sometimes. Yeah. So and same thing, you know. Um, at the end of the first year, they basically cut three or four players because mm-hmm. obviously there is like another team that you need to make, and um, so the first year you have to like play good enough. And uh, mm-hmm. my first year, I was able to play maybe six or seven games with the upper team. So, uh, which was great, you know, I think that was the most, like, in my in my year. But uh, the same thing, it's, like, there's a lot of politics and stuff oh, like I'm that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm like, sure it's, like. Like, I, I, I one day got punished, basically, and I couldn't play with them because Coach Tha wasn't a good enough captain when we played a uh, national team because during warm-up, I wasn't warming up hard enough. So <laughs> Yeah, that, like that. And, you know, matters, and I'm, like, okay, like, so they sent two other guys instead of yeah. me. And I'm, you know, I'm sitting on watching the game, looking, I'm like, that's just crazy. Like, and that's why I left, you know, a year, a year earlier. I was like, there's way too much politics down there. Like, so I, that's a perfect segue into like, who, 
Tommy recruited you, right? Yeah. So when did he first see you? Do you, do you know what tournament that was um, or how old you were? You I know? assume it was when I was 16. Uh-huh. Uh, under 16 or uh, European Championship. Yeah. Um. Then it was the... Yeah, I think that was that because then, you know, we have like, you know, your league. Yeah, yeah. There is like yeah. a Euro League junior now that is in place. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so for the people listening, like if you play overseas, same with soccer, there is a domestic league, a domestic cup, and then like yeah. an international or European league, and they all go during the whole season. Yep. To give everybody context. So like you'll play a year league game and then you might play a year league game three, three weeks later. Exactly. Right. And then you might play a cup game, go to the next round. You might play a cup game two weeks later. And then your season goes throughout the year, exactly. right? Your yeah. domestic. Okay. You basically play like two or three games a week with that thing. But, yep. and so uh, maybe I'm sure he saw me that time because I remember we played in Kaunas, Lithuania and Kevin Pangos. Uh, played for our Kaunas at that time. And oh, okay. We just finished the final. We lost, and I played pretty well. And I have Kevin, like, walking up to me. He's like, hey, like, um, I know, like, you've been recruited by Gonzaga. And I was like, your face just seemed, like, so familiar for some <laughs> reason. And I was like, and I was like, whoa. And, you know, he came and told me, like, yeah, congrats or whatever. And, like, uh, Tommy, like, talked to me. And I was like, whoa, like, that's super dope. So Kevin's got a little piece in Recruiting Joel. Yeah, that's cool. That's there, cool yeah. little tidbit right and there. And I was like, that's like, that's crazy. And, you know, I told my parents, I was like, hey, like, Kevin Pence, he was here. Wow. He told me congrats after the game. It was super dope, you know. And um, so, yeah, he he was like, I remember, like, he kind of came up to me and I was like, that's that's pretty dope. So I think those are two, like, the two times Tommy told me yeah. at least on that. So when did he make, like, when did he contact you or whatever? Was that um, your last year at Incept? Yeah, so... My second year in Incept, which was my last year, even though we we're supposed to be three years, uh-huh. I'm one year ahead at school back in France. So nobody in the U.S. at least knew that I was going to be eligible to play the next year. Oh, so, that's interesting. Um, after, I think after I was the summer under 16, I said, like, okay, like, I'm thinking about going because I was trying to leave. I was like, this is really not for me. Like all the sport, you know, for me. Yeah, like, no, and after a while, you're exactly. kind of like, I mean, you're you're playing for a national organization, so you're right. The the politics aspects yeah. got to get old. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and then and then like you, you, you know, not if you were going to go NCA, and we'll talk about that at Gonzaga, but like you guys can also go start playing and making money. I mean, yeah. I had guys when I played in Serbia that were like 17. Exactly. And just started yeah. Playing, and it was like fuck it, I'll 100%. just go fucking make money. And uh, <laughs> you know, they said, and for right. me, I was like, I have my hometown club. They love me. I could go there go whenever there I want and play. play. Yep. And so they were in the mix. And um and yeah, when I told the school, basically my recruiting went from like August 2016 to uh-huh. like um to like April 2017. And it was hard because I was in Paris. My parents were in Bordeaux. Yeah. My parents don't speak that well English. I have my basic English and like, so I couldn't understand. And, you know, they were translated, but it's like they receive a bunch of email. I receive a bunch of email. They like forward them to me and like, which school is it? And I'm like, okay. And then it's like. And it's a big jump too. It's not like you're just going down the road here. Exactly. And I'm like, okay, like, (laughs) what can I do? How can I do? And like, you know, I had like a couple of friends helping me to do that. Um, but I was like, it was kind of, it was kind of tough, you know, send some documents, like translate the transcripts. Like Mm -hmm. I had to take my, uh, um, SAT and I, I almost like didn't take it because once I realized that I needed it, it was a section in January and a section in like May. So I, if I took it in May, it was way too late. So uh, I had to take it in January. Get it, get and it like, early. So two weeks, two weeks before I just register and I'm on a waiting list. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, okay, so I still on a waiting list. So I go there and I just hope that my name will be called and they call my name. So I took the SAT and I was like, Literally today, I woke up at seven thirty. Went, you know, all the way in Paris to take my SAT, and like, maybe my name was not gonna be called. Maybe I couldn't. You got like, lucky in that regard. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. the section in wow. March got canceled, and that's yeah. the one I planned. So I'm like, okay, like here we go. That happened, and you know, I was like, <laughs> I made it, and like same thing. The study, like you know, they gave you like a book like that to like study SAT, and like, and I'm like, okay, like obviously I can't study a whole book, but I'm just trying to do my best. And I like same thing. I can't really retake it. I have to like yeah, succeed right you, now. You got to Some my nail it right exactly. now. Some of my friends that went there, like they had to retake it twice. They had the luxury. Yeah, I I took mine twice. I had to take mine twice. And I had like, to pass the math the second time. Yeah, and me, I was like, okay, time. like just do your thing. You were stressed, but just do. It. And like yeah. it went well. So like it was like the recruiting process was kind of weird, like weird, super different, obviously, than anybody else. And it was just like on one year, 
without my parents, you know, and uh, yeah. And the thing is, like, same thing. Inseb, they don't want you to go play college. I, I'm sure that's like, that's what's amazing about Tommy's ability to get some of those guys to come over because, you know, even like Domus. Yeah. You know, they his dad didn't even want him to come to Gonzaga. Same. Like he hated it. Um, you know, and obviously after the first year, it's just like okay, it makes sense. But yeah, a lot of those. Um, you know, institutions or those clubs, you're like, dude, it's it's, it's bad. It's not yeah. going to help you and blah, blah, blah. And there's always counter arguments to it, but that's a pretty big leap that you yeah. had to make. Um, like a little story about it, you know, like they understood that it was more and more college attracted to our players, you know, in France. So uh-huh. same thing, they put on walls. No NCAA, play, no NCAA coaches or agents oh, are allowed terrible. here. Yeah, so terrible. what I did was I had a coach, I think one game I had a coach from Baylor. I had a coach from... Georgia Tech, uh-huh. and they were just in town, you know. And even Roger at some point went to see me when he yeah. was coaching at Vanderbilt. And I would just tell him, you can't come to the game. Just don't wear your polo. Don't wear yeah, your don't do, polo, yeah, you know? good, that's crafty, though. Like, And so I would be in the stands. I'm like, okay, who looks like an American? Yeah. Who looks like an I'm like, okay, <laughs> you're better play like, good. You know? and that was so, funny. Like, Shit. And it was funny. And, you know, like, same thing. Like, I think they kind of get echo of it. And, like, the game, like, I think George, I think it was – Georgia Tech that came and that game, I think I only played like 10 minutes. You know? I, I got to throw this out here. Like the casual listener doesn't understand European basketball. Like your best player might only play like 22 minutes. Yeah. Right. And he might only get 12 shots. Yep. It's different. Super it's, different. it's more team down the line, uh, exactly. top to bottom. Like 100%. they don't believe in ISOs and they do a little bit, but it's, it's more like I'd go pl- when I played is, you know, I'd have 26, one game or something. Yeah. And then they'd right. be like, you didn't, you shot too much yeah. and it'd be efficient. I'd be like, well, what the fuck you want me to do? 100%. But it's just, it's different. You're yeah. like, your leading scorer might average like 16. Yeah. And he better be happy with it because he better be really great. 16. Yeah, no, exactly. No. So yeah. yeah, like you only playing 10 minutes is not, yeah. it, it's weird to think exactly. over here, but like, not over there. And I was like, yeah, they just cut my minutes off a little bit, and I didn't play really in front of that recruiter. And I'm like, obviously they knew what they were doing, but I'm yeah. like, you see, that's the that's exactly the bullshit. reason I'm trying yeah. to go. And I so, blame you. But yeah, so he was like, and then I had like a better assistant coach, like so now he's coach um, Oral Roberts. So he was the coach, you know, when they oh, were okay. making the run, uh, Coach Mills, and he came all the way to Bordeaux, and I had to. On a Sunday, I just took a train, came back. Uh, he met with my family, met with coach, and mm-hmm. went back on a Sunday morning, on a Sunday night. And they still have no idea I did that, but I was like, <sighs> it was my only way. It's it only, my way. only way, you know. And so I was like, otherwise, like they obviously won't let me go home to meet with a recruiter. So I had to like find some ways to like make the whole thing like go forward without like. So you, you know, kind of like, you you controlled your own recruiting process yeah. basically as a young yeah. man. That's crazy. Exactly. That's crazy. I was just. I mean, that fucking is wild. In really. my little room, and I was just making. Calls like with the language emails, barriers, yeah. and then, so like, uh, how far away were like? How often did you see your parents when you were at this institute? Uh maybe like for a week, every two months. Uh, oh, you know, okay. When there's like national holidays, you go back. Those, you go home. those holidays are two weeks, but they keep you at the institute for a week, and you go home for a week. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, and like it works with zones because it's basically it's thanks to schools that you get holidays, and there is like three different zones. So I would go home and just pray for my uh, my hometown friends to be in the same zone so and they can get in hall. And so it's see like each other. at the yeah. end of the day, like I barely saw all my friends. Like you know that. Were see, like it's just home. crazy from an American ex- uh, perspective to think like, okay, you're playing high school basketball. Let's just say that, and I don't get to come home and eat like my mom's cooking. I just fucking go to a dorm room. Yeah. Like it's wild. I mean, yeah. for like the, you know, the American listener here is like when you kids go to these institutes, it's like full bore basketball, basketball, yeah. basketball, non fucking stop. hundred percent. It's crazy. I like know. there's now, you know, not to get too personal. Is there like girls at this place? Can you yeah, date like, girls or like, I mean, so you know what same, I'm saying? Like same thing. So you have your, um, so there's like maybe four or five floors and the basketball players on the top floor. Uh-huh. And then there is a floor maybe of like, gymnastics and yeah and they put the other basketball girls you know like maybe like at the like first floor you uh-huh. know and so at night you're not supposed to go see girls right because you're supposed to stay in your room yeah, so yeah. the only time you can see a girl really is like in between classes have, like, or yeah, whatever or like you know so it's like it's really like, like you have the right to be in a girl's room like at 4 p.m for example uh-huh. but it's like 
you know, it's it's pretty like strict about all that. Yeah, so it's yeah. Like, imagine you know, it's so like military, it's like, like you said. Exactly. It's really like you do basketball, you have everything here, you just care about basketball and made a made a strong guy survive, you know. <laughs> and like survival of the fittest. Exactly. Let's see if you really so, want to go to college, you know what I mean? Know, or really want to play pro. That's so crazy. It's like, yeah. Like me, like I when you know, when they knew I went to college, I like, you know, it started to get really like tight, like intense, like you know, I would not play as much, you know, coach would get on my face way more. And, you know, and mm -hmm. I was like, just, you know, take a deep breath. You're going to be out of here. You know, you know what, like in two, three months, just yeah. like, you know, just don't even care about it. And, you know, those are adults like getting in face of like a 16, 17 year old. Right. Well, this is going to, this is going to come up in, a, in later in this conversation, but I think that experience probably helped you when you came to Gonzaga. You had to have hundred percent. And you it know what like, I'm, yeah, you know what I'm going to talk 100%. about. percent. So I'm like, you know, <laughs> it's like, it was like you said, it was a little preparation. I got here and I was like, okay. Oh, this is ain't, this ain't so bad. Kind but of, yeah. Yeah. I've kind of been there before. So it's just, you know, so you arrive at Gonzaga you were 17, right? You were just turned 17. Yeah. Just turned fucking 17. Yeah. So I remember when you first got there, that was, I think it was the first year I started doing radio, you know, and shit, you were probably like 155 pounds. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're, you're, Crazy. you're a junior mm -hmm. in high school, essentially. Yeah. That's what people don't realize. Like you could have been playing at Ferris. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. High school at the GSL yeah. and you're enrolled in, in practices and, you know, I just remember seeing this, like, man, this kid just looks small, man. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just being completely real. Sure. Like, fuck, I don't know if he can put on the weight, you know, but also I, I always was like, well, you know, he's 17, but I also knew in the back of my head and, and, and Fuey's going to hammer, hammer me for this. Cause I'm going to have him on in one of my shows is <laughs> I knew he was going to ride your fucking ass. Yeah. I knew it. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, uh, it was just like he has one of those guys every yeah. year that he picks out and he 100%. gets on of you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 100%. And I, I've seen it. I, it was me a little bit my freshman year, not as bad. Um, but yeah, so you arrive at 17. Yeah. Are you just, so you kind of, was it Gonzaga pretty much from the start? I mean, you talked about Georgia Tech, Baylor, yeah. but you were like, Tommy in the, the reputa reputation with the foreigners and all that stuff. Is that kind of yeah. just like, and like, Killian was there. Oh, so yeah, Killian, yeah, Killian, yeah, Killian. Yeah, Killian. Absolutely. To me, it was like stability and the community. Yeah. Like you say, I'm 17. I don't need a coach that could get fired a year later because no, that's have bad true. Results. It's a good point. I know we'll have winning records because she's been here forever. Tommy's been here forever. European background. Killian yep. is here. I was like, and really good at developing people and European, especially. I was like, let's just go there. Well, we shit. We had Roni was Frenchman. I played with Mamo Diallo, I think was his last name, was French. Yeah. I think one of the colonies or whatever the fuck you yeah. guys call him now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then uh, P Mac, P Pierre Marie Altador Cespedes played here. Yep. He was French so Canadian. Like, so, you know, it was like a bunch of like. Yeah. So, like we, the, the, the university. Sense. Yeah. So that's interesting. So, you get here. What was like your first, like, you know, you're in, you're in a practice or whatever. Were you like, you know, I'm punching above my weight class a little bit here at first, or were you like, it's going to take me some time to get, cause yeah. you redshirted, right? Yeah. yeah. They redshirted you, which was the oh, right decision. hundred mm percent. -hmm. So like when I got here, I was like, okay, like, let, so I, I never heard you fucking say a word yeah. for a whole year. Yeah. Like was, for real. Yeah. Like I was, <laughs> and I'm not an introvert at all, but no, it's like, <laughs> it's like, I like, I don't want to like, I want to look stupid speaking English with some funky words. Like, yeah, being, no, I'm it's, like for me to like, actually have a whole conversation it will take a lot and like i need to search my words a little bit yeah, yeah. and like if you use a word that i never you know that i never heard so like about it like you know i used to walk around and say like to great people i would just say hello because we learned that you say hello mm -hmm. is like the right and hi and what's up is really like to your buddies so every time i would walk around and see somebody who's older than me or something i would say, say hello. hello and then you're like hey what's up and i'm like oh like he just said, what's up? So, like, so then he thinks he's my so, buddy or exactly. like... And yeah. then I had to ask Corey, I'm like, okay, like, what are you answer to what's up? Or like, is it okay for me to say, oh, hey, how are you doing to like mm -hmm. an adult? And he was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. So then I will walk around with my mindset, okay, no matter what people say, I'm just going to say like, doing good and you, you know, because yeah. you can answer that to <laughs> kind of everything. And then one day, like somebody said, hey, what's up? And I was like, I don't know if I can say doing good and you. And I was like, I just got stuck for a second and that person kind of smiled and I was like... 
hey, what's up, what's up? And I was like, yes, like, you kind of understood that I was kind of stuck. So that's one of the reasons I was really quiet my first year. But yeah, like, coming here, I was like, wow, like, those guys are ballers. Like, we have ballers in Europe, but this is, like, hoopers. Like, those, yeah, yeah. like everybody here is a hooper, you know? Like, you're, you're, you're not fast. You're not, like, a shooter. You're not athletic. You're, like, you are, like, 150. Mm-hmm. You are under the only thing that can save you right now is your IQ and your energy. Yeah, that's the only thing. Like, if you want to just like have like a little bit of like, you have to be like the smartest guy on the court and just give it all and talk. You know, like trying to like bring energy. Yeah. And right away, I was like, okay, like those guys are obviously way better. They are like older. They're experienced. I'm learning, and I was like, at first I told Tommy, I was like, I don't need a retro. Like, you know, even if you put me for like. A second at the end of the game, I'll be fine, you know. And and I didn't have exactly the idea of like, okay, what's the red shirt? It was scary. You don't play for a whole year. I'm the best player in Europe, and you're gonna. Dude, tell they me- told me I was gonna fucking gray shirt. You so see? like, that's a year and another year. So <sighs> I get it. It's scary. Yeah, exactly. Because you you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, you know, like I don't want to sit out. Exactly. Like, what are you talking about? I was about? like, slowly, I'll be able to crack the rotation. That's how it works in Europe. You know, you just crack your rotation slowly. Like, yeah, I'm the one. That- you bet on yourself. You know, exactly. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, coach, you only play seven to eight guys. And yeah. from the jump, pre- that I, I learned that preseason was so important because once you're on the ninth on the verge to crack the rotation and being the seven, eight guy is almost at four years. I didn't see that happening yeah, for nobody. No, yeah. And so I'm like, okay, like those guys are way better. I have to explain to my parents. Okay. I won't play all this year, but don't worry. It's part of the plan. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'll be doing great. Tommy's really taking good care of me. Everybody's taking good care of me. You don't have to worry at all. Like, because I'm like, they send their 17 year old, you know? Yeah, no, that's. Like, I'm like, that's. As parents, like, so, like, I, my parents, like, until recently, had no idea about my struggle. Like, they knew I wasn't playing because, but they had no idea that I was coming home, like, dang, like, today was suck. Yeah, you know? yeah. They had no. I was. I can't tell them that. <laughs> like, yeah, they have enough you, pressure. Yeah, because they're sitting there going, you know, I sent my baby across the the pond here exactly. and what the fuck yeah. why did we let him and blah 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 then it, yeah i'm like you would be so worried i don't i can't afford that so you know and um but yeah i i realized pretty quickly that i wasn't you know i wasn't up there yet at that level but it just gave me so much more like will to work and stuff i was mm-hmm. like and then at the same time i was like that's the reason i got here you know a bunch of kids just hide on friends because they're gonna get jacked on potential that's how it goes now you yeah. know oh he's six five lengthy and i lengthy. think I could have got drafted maybe a year or two ago just because I'm like I would have played ten minutes pro six five lengthy yeah huge potential point guard you know but I'm like right now I would be like shaking my boots in the NBA because I'm like okay like you have the I don't experience. know if anybody wants yeah. me because I just hit a wall when I got to the US so I was like that wall that's exactly the reason I go to college is to play those guys who are the best athlete you know mm-hmm. and I was just gonna like hit the wall and at some point you know I I knew I was kind of gonna like get over that wall and I'm just happy it happened. So talking about breaking into the rotation. So I think for me covering you guys was going into your sophomore year, because I think your freshman year, a few, we would put you at the end of games yeah. and you'd make plays. And, you know, I'd sit there with uh, Tom Hudson that, who does the games with me and be like, well, that was actually the right read. Yeah. Okay. Then you start scoring. It was mm-hmm. like, okay. You know yeah. what I mean? And I saw some growth. So then Okay, we're going to get into a little bit juice here. <laughs> Brock Brevet comes in. Yeah. Your sophomore year. What were you thinking before the season? Because everybody fucking yeah. was talking about he was going to be Jason Williams. and Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I never said it on the air, but I knew that you probably kicked the shit out of him that fall. Yeah. I you was, did. You did, didn't you? I was you? just like. And he's probably a nice kid. We're not yeah, burying no, no, a kid. Yeah, 100%, 100%. But I'm saying you I'm, were like, this is either now or never yeah. if I'm going to fucking play here. Exactly. I got to I gotta kick the shit out of this I guy. Like, this is my last chance. Yeah. Like, That's I've good. been here yeah. for two years already. Like, yep. I was damn near, like, gently pushed away, you know? Uh, and I kind of, like, say, you, like... You can be real with... You know? Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. I know that I'm maybe not the one here, but I just said, no, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay there and make, my, make some room for myself mm-hmm. and... I just went into that int- that preseason and I was just like, I don't care who you are, you know, like I will just go so hard. I'll make myself needed. I was, like, I was just in that mindset. Dude. I was like, fuck it. Great. I know I might not, shit. I might not even Love be wanted shit. here, but I'm just going to go so hard. I worked so hard. Like yeah. 
I knew, I, I, I knew it from I afar, know. but I knew it was like, he, uh, Joel probably kicked the shit out of that kid every fucking and, day. And you know, and every day. I came back from the world championship where I played great. And I was like, all like, I had a bunch of calls from like European teams, you know. Mm -hmm. So like, like, yeah, like, you're not playing. Yeah, exactly. come make some money. Yeah, they were like I don't know what they don't see in you, but they don't. They didn't play you, and you just came here and you were soup. Like you should come here. You know, mm -hmm. obviously you're gonna get paid. And like you know, Euro Cup, like some great clubs. You know, hey, Euro Cup's like, good too. Yeah, yeah like I played in Euro Cup. Yeah, and I was like 19, 20. I was like, wow. Like I for for two days, I was like, dang it. But then I was just like, man, you just. You just work way too hard. Too hard to just be like, like see you guys. You know, like yeah. you it's came here like, because it was hard and you have a small window, but it's here. You didn't have the window at all. It's here. After two years and a half, this is uh, to me became a challenge. I was like, nah, there is no way you don't leave college without being one of the one of the best players in the country. There is no way That's, you allow yourself. That mindset is is unbelievable, and by I the was way. Just like, Fucking great. I was like, let's go, you know? Obviously, like, nothing mean on a route, like, you know? No, that's you and, know? And, and I think the listeners are going to understand that. We're not shitting on him. Yeah. But we're saying that it. when somebody gets recruited over here, because it happens all the time, not, especially now yeah. at Gonzaga, it happened to me, um, you know, they're, they're just bringing as many guys as they can. It's just how it is. Yeah. You have to go and it's like I he's my teammate, but I'm going to bust his ass every yeah. single fucking exactly. day and make myself a part of this rotation yeah. to where coach has no choice. And I think the Bahamas tournament is where you kind of yeah, that was like you played fantastic, but you were just letting it rip. You were making Freedom. all the right reads. And yeah, you had you didn't have to look over your shoulder. Yeah. There was a bunch of who it was Adman was kind of hurt. Yes, he only played like a, he just started basically for the first four and in both quarters. Uh, both half yeah and um and then i was playing like the whole half yep. and uh and you know like preseason i was just like okay i know it's gonna be seven or eight guys i don't care who are the six or seven other guys but i have to be, be one of them yeah. i don't care if it's seven guards one center or whatever i have to be one of them like i will make myself like that guy that you know he will be in there you know yeah. and that's why i started the season you know now you know i was seventh man and i was like it's all good because like technically I had such a good like preseason. I yeah. kind of knew that um, yeah, I had the, the ability to like be a, to be a starter, become a starter. And I was yeah. like, "Look, right now, you're, the only thing you're worried about is like, how can I get more minutes or go from twenty to thirty? Mm -hmm. Used to be from how do I get zero to one? Zero you know? One, yeah. So I'm like, you're in a great situation. There's yeah. nothing to complain about. And all you have to literally all you have to do is keep working and play good during the games. Like you know, like. Yeah, because you was way worse. You murdered in that tournament, man. Yeah, you were balling like, too. You ever you were doing your shake and your pull up yeah. game was going too. You were hitting floaters, I and then Fuey was finally running fucking ball screens for you. Yeah. And you're great on the, you know, the the weak side guy. You can yep. hit the corner. You can hit the big. You're the only guy that could pivot and hit the dump down yeah. pass on that team. Yep. I think Wolverich could do it that year as well. But you guys could come off. Our bigs always sit. And then, yeah, yes, exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Was it was like, like if you do that for Fuey, then he's he, like, oh, yeah, exactly. fuck yeah, you can do right? it. You know he's what I mean? Like, <laughs> you do it a couple times, yeah. and he's like, oh. And I think, yeah. like you said, like, for example, it's so stupid, but that particular move was like, okay, he's not just taking the ball screen, sprinting to the rim, trying to throw something up. He's mm -hmm. actually reading the game, sitting down, and hitting one of the best big in the country. Yep. He understood how it worked. He got Corey Phil, and he's understood that he can sit down, pass it back yep. to Corey. He got Killian down there. He understand that he, that's a shooter with a high pocket. So you pass it to him, and I Pick was and like, pop, "Yeah, exactly." And I'm like, to me, that year is when I become, you know, like I became a player. Like I had a little more freedom, mm -hmm. and I felt it every game, every game, every game. And like Bahamas was when, because I right after Bahamas, I became a starter. And yeah, no, it was it was well earned too. too. I right. mean. Just watching that tournament, it was just like, man, Joel's playing fucking fantastic. But you yeah. could just tell you the confidence was there. Yeah. You you know, not, obviously speaking to you now, but I, I could see it as a broadcaster and as a former player. I'm like, okay, the lifted off of his yeah. shoulders, right? Yeah. The monkey 100%. was off his back. It was like, oh, 100%. my God, now I can finally play with freedom. Yeah, because um, yeah, you were snapping it off. That thing was looking good. Um, yeah, that was – I mean, I knew going into that – or going into that season once – Brock left. I I had the inclination. I'd, I'd never say it on the radio. So I didn't want to, mm -hmm. you know. But I was like, I, I guarantee Joel beat the shit out of him. And I always I, wanted you know, to know. Yeah. And I I, like, I knew, but I wanted to get confirmation. It was like, but that's a great mindset because yeah. let's just be real here, okay? So for the people listening right now, like when somebody that high highly regarded 
re- gets recruited and you haven't played in fucking two years, yeah. they're basically telling you, yeah, you go transfer. Go. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, what they're yeah. telling you without yeah. saying it. Yeah. And they love you as a as a dude, and are, they treat they treat guys well. They do at Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, never an issue. 100%. And they would help you out if you transfer. Yep, that's what I would be But they, 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 will, they were basically saying, fucking get out of here. We want to use this scholarship for somebody else. You're not yeah. playing. Um, so to have that mindset is fantastic, yeah. man. It really is. I was reading a piece on Sport Illustrated like during the tournament. And yeah, because she used this word. I think he said, like, we're basically short on guards. Like, we basically almost had nobody else. And I'm like, and I'm like, you know. Just, and you so know, you got to let this was, shit go with and you. you know, just let it fucking go. That was his way to say, like, okay, like, he works all the way to a point where he could play. But in the same time, he was also because he was. And me, I was like, I knew it 100%. I was like, I'm basically like, you know, I come to your home and you're basically, like, giving me all the hints that, you can, you know, you can leave now. It's late, but I, I'm still here on the couch and ask for more snacks. And that, that was me. <laughs> I was that guy. But I was like, you know what? In this world, that's the only way I was going to make it. And I well, you, it you obviously that your sophomore year had a fantastic season. You had the, you were the West Coast Conference Tournament MVP. Yeah. Was that the? Who'd you guys beat that year? Was it same areas? BYU uh, in the same areas series? in championship. Yeah, same areas. So it was the year before they beat they beat us, right? Yeah, uh, so yep. year, the, the year before, Rui and, uh, yeah, Rui, yeah, yeah, BC and Norvell yeah, didn't yep. they score like fifty or some yeah. shit? It was a bad game, was, anyway. Uh, so you guys avenged that. So, like you said earlier, you put your name in. What did teams tell you, like right away from last year? Like, what was the 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 most of the feedback? Yeah. Um, they were just like trying obviously put on weight. That's what everybody said yeah. because that I think that's no secret. Um, and everybody's you know, gonna say that all yeah, the time. Yeah, exactly. Now. Even now, I'm sure they're gonna say the <laughs> yeah, same thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just keep working on you know those ball screen read and being like a secondary ball handler. Yeah. Um, being able to you know guard two and maybe three maybe guards, threes, you know? um, especially today put, with guys switching all exactly. the time. Yeah. And as you put on some weight, and uh, yeah, that you know, um, I think at that time for some reason I had a feeling I was like I, I think I'm ready like. At worst, what's going to happen is I'm going to have a redshirt year in the NBA. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I've been in that situation. The yeah. redshirt year, I know exactly, like, I will be patient enough. Out of all those kids in the draft that you're like, okay, maybe they're not ready right now, uh-huh. I'll be the one who will be patient enough and put all the work in during that retro year in the NBA. Well, that, 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 but again, that comes down to what organization drafts you too, and you know that. 100%. You know what I'm 100%. saying? Because some of them are like, you can't go now, fuck it. Totally. You know totally. what I'm saying? And that's why, for me, like, I didn't do, I think I didn't interview with like five teams only. Mm-hmm. Like, and I did them maybe like, Two weeks before I announced my return, it was uh-huh. really late. It was just like there is no reason to like throw yourself in and do an interview with all those teams because not all those teams give you. We're looking for situations. We're looking for a place where you'll be able to develop and like that they want. They understand that take sometimes or not take sometimes. You yeah. will develop. So I was like, all those um, friends that I talked to, I was like, you understand that. I'm huge on like having a great situations, you know, and we were talking about with G leagues and stuff. Like I was like, I don't, you know, if you want to put me in a G league, it's fine because as long as you understand that I'm here to, de- to like develop and get better, get all better the time, and I understand no, my skill set exactly. that I bring. Yeah. I have no, which is unique with, by like, the way. Thank you. It I is. Have, I'm like, there is no, like, I don't have any shame in like spending some time in a G league. I'm not going to be that guy. Yeah. I'm, I know it's a long road and like, at the end of the day, as long as you understand and you're in this with me too, we're going to be great. You as a franchise and me as a player. Mm-hmm. So, so they're like, basically, you know, get quicker, get faster. Everybody's going to say that. This yeah. is true in the league. But I think now your ability to read ball screens, I mean, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be perfect for the next yeah. level. I mean, it really is. Cause yeah. you, I mean, honestly, I covered the games and, you know, I – I'd be as objective as I can be, yeah. you know, without, I'm not going to hammer guys, but also, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? No. But also I'm not going to sit here and just be, Oh, he's fucking great. I, yeah. You know, some of the guys yeah. I'm like, Oh, he's not ready. That's, you know what I'm yeah, saying? But yeah. you, the way you read uh ball screens is fantastic. You're one of the yeah. best we've had on a long time, honestly, because you can go down you can get, you can turn the corner. Like I said, you can wait for the roll. You can pivot through, make that yeah. pass. You always made that skip pass if the guy the corner, came yeah. and tagged, and then you could always pivot back and hit. And then obviously mm-hmm. when your offense was – you were more open to use it. Yeah. The guy goes under. You had the ability to shoot it. You could hit a floater as yeah. well. You're crafty around the rim. You have a layup package. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's funny when, you, you know, you go to those 
you know, those, uh, you know, when the league talks to you and you're like, well, fuck, I can do that. But then you get a year better and you're like, no, I couldn't. Yes. So th- is that how you feel? You're like, shit, like so, I'm way better than I, yeah. you know, and, and it's just one year, but when you get that right advice hundred percent, and you can focus on it, it's like, fuck dude, that, now I feel yeah. you know, hundred like, percent confident you know, about it. Last year they were telling me like, yeah, you know, I think you can improve in your ball screen. And I was like, oh, I thought it was, I was decent. Obviously you can improve. I was not like, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. no, I know but what you I mean. was like, oh, yeah. gotcha. Like you mentioned it. So I think, and now I, I'm like, okay, I get what you mean. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they were like, yeah, be more comfortable as a ball handler. I get what you mean. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm like, same thing defensively, maybe like create more deflection, be more. And, you know, all this during the year defensively, I was like, try to create havoc, you know, deflections, like steals, like, and I'm like, okay. I get exactly what you were talking about now. Yeah. Like I have long arm. Let, let's use it. Let's be even more yeah. active. And I was like, hundred percent. Well, you have a unique uh, body for defense, and I, that sounds weird. But yeah. you, you get as a hooper, understand 100%. what I'm saying? Like you have, what's your wingspan? You, I, I don't even you know, know what's my wingspan. You're how tall are you? Six five. Six five. Yeah. So you probably like I, I honestly I think you probably like six seven six eight. Yeah. You have uniquely long arms, and so like when you would guard guys, I don't think they were used to it, especially you know. Yeah. And so, like, I would laugh, you know, calling the games because you get a lot of deflections, but then you could guard bigger guys and contest yeah. really good. And then, you're, like, your ability to rebound was fantastic this year. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, did they, okay? So, for the basketball junkies, did they teach you that ghost cut from the from the baseline, or did you? Is that something that you start doing and then they yeah. let you do it? To be because you did that fucking better than yeah. anybody I've ever seen. In my head, it was like, okay. um, you're gonna play off the ball way more this year. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Wh- Jaylen, wh- whatever yeah. you like it or not, yep. it will happen. So I was like, "How do you still bring to the table, and how do you survive as a player?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I always love like cutting." You know, I was. I think my first couple of years, I was joking with Tommy. I was like, "My first game, my first dunk is gonna be." There is a drive in the middle. Mm-hmm. I will cut baseline and I'll go to him and go. Yeah. And I'm like, because I'm like. That's just the right read. Like you go to practice in front, you know they teach you when yeah, they stop the stop the drive and you there. go behind exactly. And Absolutely. I was like, and so I'm like, yes. During the whole year, that cut was some teams. I would be like, yeah, he's a cutter, and I would have dudes almost like heels on the baseline, you mm-hmm. know, when they guard me in the corner. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, it's funny, but look, he's he's spacing the floor. You know, I'm spacing the floor yeah. just with my ability to cut. Like, yeah, the guys always checking on me now. Yeah, because you can't fully you can't fully commit to a tag or to uh you know a straight line drive exactly. if you're going behind me, so right? Because it's, like, it's, it's no different than getting backdoor lobbed. Exactly, it's the same thing. So it's like he's checking on me. Now he's more flat. He cannot be in the gap because yep, I'm a good flat. cutter. So yep. if you want to get your pull up, you will have it. And I'm like, that's crazy. But I just found a way. To, and at the beginning of the year, I think I started awfully shooting the ball. And I was like, that's my way to like space the floor. That's my way to like still exist. And that's my way to like do some work and help mm-hmm. my teammates out. Because when they drive, they just find me now. They don't have to go all or nothing. So I think that's just something that comes with a game. Like, oh, uh, you did it. Like, like, honestly, like I would have loved to play with that style, like that type of cutter that you had, because it, 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 it makes that weak side defender like really have to yeah. think like you said like 100%. you can't fully commit to it you would get so many like uh, cheap offensive rebounds yeah. to like tip yeah. outs because guys would be out of position mm-hmm. so they couldn't turn and box you yeah. out and in your long arms you tip or you grab and then See? you know what i'm saying like, for me, it all the like, time it's like fuck there's joel again Boom, yeah. lay up lay up lay up for me, you know it was, like, it was a way also to you know make my way to the rim when you sh- if I see you driving, I'm like, okay, if you don't pass me to the cut, I'll be around the rim. Yeah, you just you already have you already so have I was position. Like, that's oh. perfect. And I was like, that's that's just great. All right. So I gotta get into just a little bit like what is the what is your funniest like Coach Few story if you have one? Um my funniest even if all right, just a, a story, doesn't have to be funny. Yeah. I think uh it was the year I think it was my sophomore year. I mean, freshman year at basketball. So he was mm-hmm. with Rui, Brandon. And um, for some reason, you know, I think he was just like, I don't know if we lost or I don't know if, uh, I think he maybe, yeah, you just need more energy in practice. And he was like, yeah, you're just walking around like you're a victim. And so <laughs> before the, you know, before the practice, we all in a circle and he tells everybody, he said, okay, repeat after me. I am not a victim. So I go, I am not a victim. I am not, and everybody one by <laughs> one just say like, I am not a victim. I am not a victim. And you got Rui, Brent, everybody. Just, and I was just like, wow. And I think we did it maybe two days in a row or something like that. And I was like, wow. Like, <laughs> Who the fuck did you guys lose to that year? I don't, I don't, we lost to like Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And then was it, no, the PK-80 was the year before that. Never yeah, mind. we lost to Tennessee and 
Gillas <laughs> some North Carolina. But uh, you know, I don't even oh, yeah. think it was like around the loss. I think it was just like, yeah, bring energy to practice. Uh-huh. Like you walking around, and he loves the term like, yeah, you're not a victim. And so like we're in the bubble with Corey, and we're joking about it. And sometimes <laughs> Corey and I would just be like, yes, I'm not, not a, a victim. victim, you know. And so we just. Does he joke. still show up late to practice? Do we? He does. Fuck, doesn't that drive you fucking like nuts, right, man? I think sometimes. Fuck, we man, like, I used to say shit would drive me crazy. Sometimes it's Fuck. like practice at one. Yeah. Practice at one fifteen, right. you know. And he just he just walks down yeah. from like his office or wherever, and like I asked Gary, I'm like, yeah, what time is it? And he's like, yeah, it's like one twenty seven or something. And I'm like, it's yeah, it's so funny. Oh yeah. And you know you don't care because you're because not gonna like, say anything. But and like you know you're here anyway. But it's like you come out twenty minutes before practice or thirty yeah, minutes yeah. to get a workout. Yeah. And, and then you're like you like, hour, you, get, you know you you get lathered up. Yeah. You know you get your sweat, and then he's not there. Come, and then it's like, and then he'll come energy. in and be like, "How come guys are not shooting around?" Like, "Fuck, I've been shooting the whole fucking time." Exactly, what the you fuck know? you talking about? He used to drive. It is it, it. Yeah, he used to drove but everybody apparently, crazy. Apparently, it was way worse before. Apparently, sometimes. Oh, like, it, it, the the way Fuey is with you guys now is. And it, this is not an old man get off my lawn thing because I, I could give a shit how he coaches yeah. you guys now. Like it is, has doesn't he is so much lenient and cooler with you guys. <laughs> I think he's he's got better players now. Yeah, I mean I'm just being real, like top to bottom. But like he used to, he was never as lenient and uh, like let you guys like kind of you know do your handshake shit and yeah. which I, it's different culture now and you know and the you know, the music and all that, he never let us do that stuff. And like, he used to just, he used to be like a little more on edge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he's way more calm yeah. now. You and, know what I'm saying? Cause I think experience. And you know, you even know? me in like this four years, I've seen that change too. I'm like, yeah, he's figured it out. Yeah. You're yeah. definitely a little softer or like, well, he's done a good job of, of adjusting, you know, I'm, you know, I just sat here for two minutes and hammered him, but he's done a good job of knowing, yeah. okay, he's going to have high level players, who are obviously smart kids and smart basketball IQ wise. Yeah. So you don't need to ride them the whole stinking yeah. time. Let them make their own yep. mistakes and work through it and be a little bit more positive. He was, he, and, and, and few, he's not an MF guy. So yeah. let me clarify that. He's not, you know, like a Tom Izzo or the guy at South Carolina that's just going to like scream in your face, mm-hmm. but he'll ride you and coach yeah. you. And so I just watched some of the stuff now and I just, I was like, dude, we could have never get away with some of the and stuff you, know, you guys do. At the beginning of the year, I was like, we're going to have like personalities in this locker room. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I just wonder how it's going to go. I was like, there's no way because she's going to let that happen. And at first I was like, oh, it's happening, but it's summer. So it's fine. You know, when yeah, yeah, start. yeah. And then I'm like, oh, actually, like, there's more things that people are able to do, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, like you said, coach, you really adjusted and understood, like that was the way to make well, it. Well, he's, he's got, you know, obviously a, a great staff that helps. So who's your guy? Is B Mike your guy? Uh, Tommy, who's Tommy? Hi, Tommy. Yeah. Tommy. Tommy. Just cause like he recruited me yeah. and stuff. Everybody yeah. has their guy. Tommy yeah. was my guy too. Yeah. Um, like, but, my, my first year, I really like, it was really important. I had really had one guy and then the more, you know, you grow and the more important you're obviously like, like I talked to B Mike, I talked to Roger all the yeah. time. Yeah, but Tommy I mean, you all y'all listen to the exactly. coaches, but everybody has but their kind of. was definitely my guy. Your guy, and you kind of, you know, helped you navigate through. Yeah. And then if you want to bitch about Fuey, you, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm Fuey saying? Like you need you need somebody exactly. that that kind of takes you from the edge and brings you back yep. a little bit. And um, yeah, so that's it, it, interesting, man. Like with the coach Fuey stuff, because he's uh, I always tell guys that I'm like he's way different now. And they're like, you sure? And I'm like, dude, just fucking watch him on the sidelines man yeah. and like some of the stuff that he does you can tell he's just way calmer mm-hmm. i think the usa basketball helped him helped him yeah he learned going, so much yeah he's around bayheim shashevsky yeah and they have you know before my era we didn't have dudes we yeah. had great players but we didn't have high level you know the best player in france mm-hmm. coming you know what i'm saying yeah. like we had diamonds in the rough and we came you know what i mean so he figured out okay if i'm gonna get these type of players i need to change my style a little bit and then I need to be probably a little bit less, not abrasive, but just a little more open-minded um, to younger kids. Yeah. And I think him being older too is, you know, you get older when you get wiser or whatever yeah. they say. So, I mean, yeah. it's just funny. Like yeah. it's few, he's, I mean, some of the <laughs> shit that he said uh, to me and, and stuff uh, is wild. It's just because it's like, fuck man. Yeah. 
you Ooh. know, like he's so much easier to talk to now, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Yeah. Like, he couldn't even like talk yeah. to him back yeah. in the day. Like, and then, you guys were scared to talk to him. My freshman year, I was, you, know, you said I wasn't talking yeah. at all. My, I'm, I was just walking around the wall and I was like, okay, I just hope nobody come because I don't know how, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. Well, that. here, let me, let me say this and let me give the, the, the listeners an, kind of the inside of what. So we talked about it a little bit earlier, but Fuey wasn't a big fan of your game. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the truth. And yeah. you know that, 100%. you know, and, and like I said, I wouldn't say that on the radio and there's no reason for me to say yeah. it. I'm just calling the games, but he wasn't a fan. Mm-hmm. And so for you to have the mindset that you did earlier and talked about earlier and to like, you know, in today's age, when it gets shitty, most guys fucking go home yeah. or they transfer or in your case, like I can go play pro basketball yeah. and uh, you know, I can still go to the draft eventually. Like for you to not, fall into that uh mindset and kind of deal with his it's not negativity but you know when a coach doesn't like you yeah you know what i'm saying it's fantastic (laughs) i I really mean that man and i've said it on the radio um i said it last year i said it this year you're one of my all-time favorite zags and i really mean that no for real man because you are a self-made player not that not saying you don't have the ability you have the athletic, athletic ability but you you took coaching and, um, you know, hard lessons to heart and you looked at yourself in the mirror as a player yeah. and you improved every single fucking year. And I love that shit. I love it. Cause yeah. I was a self-made player too. Mm-hmm. Most guys, yeah. most guys are in a certain regards, but you're going to, you're going to, when you go play in the NBA, you're going to see guys that are, you're going to be like, how the fuck is this guy? Oh, he can, he's 45 inch vert. And yeah, oh, I get yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? But you're like, he doesn't know the game, Yeah, but he's just God given abilities. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you, you could have went home. And it would have been completely justified. I mean, yeah. you literally weren't even on the fucking radar and his rotation. And yeah. so, like, when I'm saying this to the people, and I'm not trying to embarrass you right yeah, now. No, oh, 100%. You know sure. what I'm saying? Like, That's- you stuck it out. You said, F it. I'm going to I'm gonna beat somebody out. I'm going to make myself part of this yeah. rotation. And you turn yourself into an NBA prospect. It's yeah. fantastic, man. Right. It really is. Like, it, 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 and I've said that. And when people listen to the broadcasts and, and – uh, you know, when I call the games, I'm always singing your praises just because like you make the right reads, you play the right way, you play with passion. It's never, I always thought you were too unselfish this mm-hmm. year a little bit sometimes. Yeah. I, I really did. Yeah. Yeah, there was I, times that I was like, like that, that he needed to let that one rock. Yeah. Right. You know what 100%. I'm saying? I, I felt sometimes somewhere. I was there like, was no question. It wasn't that you felt it. It was the fucking yep. truth. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, Joel <laughs> yeah. needs to let that one fly. And, you know, you'd go and make the right reads and stuff. But again, man, like the way you handled yourself through those four years and, you know, made yourself a legitimate top 15 pick. I mean, it's crazy. You could have fucking quit and it would have been justified because it's not it's not easy not playing Been in my situation. But I had a paycheck coming, so it's a little bit different. And then having a coach that. And, and, and again, I got to make sure that I make it sound like it's not like few. was just like F you. Yeah. But you, you can tell when you're not a part of somebody's yeah. future plans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And for you to bust into that and then, you know, work yourself into the rotation and then all the accolades that I just described is it was, yeah. it was amazing. I, like I, really, I always joke around like just, you know, to go off and it's like, I always say that, you know, if, after a first semester or like mm-hmm. the first year, if just I would have gone back to friends for holiday and I wouldn't have come back, yeah. you know, I don't, I, and I don't, it I, I don't it think it anybody would have noticed or cared, you know, I don't know which one of you, did, but, you know, I, and it was just, it was just the truth. And like, it happens, like, like you said, you always, you know, when the coach is not feeling you because you know, when a coach is feeling you. So it's like, absolutely. as a baller, you, yeah, you know, you know, you're not stupid. You understand. Yeah. And you get it. And for me, it was like, okay, like obviously know that, you know, I'm not, I was about to say the first guy, I'm not a top 10 guy, you know, that he's thinking mm-hmm. about, but you know, it's just going to have like, it's going to be part of my story, I guess. And I just have to like make it happen, it's, you know? And uh, honestly, man, one of the, my favorite all time Zags to cover, I'm you. dead, dead serious. The way you play the game, your, um, you know, your basketball IQ competitiveness and then the story, man. And I, I, I can't say it enough. Like you could have fucking listened to what people were telling you back home and it would have been, it would have yeah. been justified. It's that ain't easy to do. Yeah. 
because it, it fucking sucks when you're riding the pine and then you still got to go practice and the coach, you make plays and you, it's one of those you, in practice, you could go for 50 and you still weren't yeah, going to play. Yeah, right. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So yeah. then you're just sitting there like, yeah. what the fuck am I doing here, mm-hmm. man? And in your situation being from France and, you know, walking into a pro opportunities, I mean, you can't do that in the States. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, it's a lot easier to leave. Um, so yeah, man, like in, in all seriousness, not trying to embarrass you, yeah. man, but you're one of my all time favorite players Thank that you. played there. Yes. Your story's fantastic. I think you're going to have a fantastic career. You have a unique skill set. You. Your uh, mindset is fantastic. You're not afraid of the grind. You know, you're not yeah. afraid of getting dirty a little bit. Um, so I think the future's bright for you, man. Like, Thanks, so honestly, man. I appreciate you coming right. on. It's, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure, man. Yeah. I, I honestly, I'm just like, I'm so happy because I'm like, I know that, like, I know how real you are, you know? Yeah. Like, you, like you say, like, obviously when you're calling the games, you will not say, okay, that was atrocious, you know, but mm-hmm. I know how real of a person you are. So I'm like, appreciate I'm it. just like every word you said, I'm like, this is a real word. It's not like you're something. You hey, know, if something I didn't like think it, I wouldn't fucking, I would, yeah, you know what? I would, t- know, I would exactly. tell you, go fuck yourself. Exactly. You know I'm what I'm like, saying? Like, good luck. I'm like, there's no reason for you, you know to I mean? tell me that. So I'm like, it, it means a lot. And I'm like, you know, it just, I just like realize it now, you know, I'm like, I didn't know how much like people like loved me and how much. Like, oh man, we were for the people always much, rude. Uh, seriously people were rooting for, rooting for you, like, man. That especially at the Bahamas tournament, I was like, he fucking earned this man. Like for real, like he earns all of this. Anytime he gets in the game now, then you turn into a starter. It was like, I can't say it, but, uh, you know, I tell people that I have close to me around town, like, this fucking kid earned this, yeah. man. And I'm like, like, I'm not, you know, the most fancy and stuff. And, like, I'm not the one getting all the attention. But, like, when I announced I was leaving, like, just reading the people, like, you know, saying thank you. And, like, yeah, you're one of my all-time favorite. I was like, that's just crazy because, like. It's true, man. Like, you know, four years ago, I was a nobody. I was just like, mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't just... I wasn't even able to like step on the floor and like for that to happen. I'm just like, I'm just like, that's just crazy. I just, I just realized like, I'm starting realizing how much like, you know, people are rooting for me and I'm like, that's just, that's, that means a lot. It's great, me. man. It's you're in a bright future. And you know, like I said, thanks for coming on the show. We're going to be watching you. Hopefully thanks you get drafted you. to a good organization. You got to do the right thing though. This is, I'm going to tell all the players that come on this, like you guys got to come back a little bit and, and, foster the next players i think that's kind of been lost a little bit if i'm being being completely honest Mm -hmm. come back for a week two weeks put these guys through ball screen drills and stuff Mm -hmm. like that we used to do that the older guys you know what i'm saying yeah yeah yeah. you kind of i feel like you're responsible for the next one or two crops Mm -hmm. right one or two years and then obviously but come back and put these guys through workouts and stuff and like you know what i'm saying yeah like i've always been thankful but you know the josh burke is the salesman the salesman yeah no guys did it for me man you know know what i'm saying guys like uh, you know i I don't know if i would be there without him because they jeremy john all those guys really all those guys really i don't think have one teammate that didn't just like pick me up when i was down or that didn't just you know help me like you said those ball screens were like those sit down and swivel i watched obviously i watched josh perkins do it for Mm -hmm. so long but he also like talked to me and like guided me to all that and like like all those guys i always like i i never want to forget them and forget to mention them because they're huge in like my game just and yeah. me understanding okay how can i become a good gonzaga player they definitely like you know you should smart. you know you should get contact to help you out with and I, he'd love it is go see john stockton yeah yeah oh you know what you i'm saying see, no for real just because, go over, go over the warehouse one day yeah and and just have him put you through a workout and he'll he'll show you shit that you never even thought of as a passer like i swear to god i went to one of them yeah because i was on point guard and it's fucking crazy i have a funny story because i so when i got here right people were apparently i was almost like okay maybe he should go to g prep you know i was so Mm -hmm. young yeah 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 and uh because sam stockton you know sent me a text to like congratulate me and he was like we came so far from like I was actually going in a workout with um, the AAU of like the Griffins. Oh, okay, yeah, I know what and, you're talking uh, about. And you know, I was that college guy working out with like you know all the kids and, and all stuff. stuff. Yeah. And, you know, and for me, I was like, I don't know if it's weird, but I love it. Yeah. Like, obviously, I shouldn't be there. Maybe I was, if I wasn't, uh, if I was good enough, I would not be here. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I was just loving it. I was like, and I don't know. Maybe some people take it for granted, but like I'm from France and I have John Stockton in front of me like across the street and he's like 
grilling me and giving me tips. I'm like, I mean, I thought I called my dad. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's John. Say, yeah, I was like, say. I just had to work out with John. He taught me this, that, that, and like you know, and I'm like, my dad was like, whoa, like actually, and I was like, yes, and I'm like. He's literally around and like literally I tell people like, it's crazy, but John is so nice. If I want, I can text him and he will give me a work. Like yeah. you said, and my, like you said, mind opener, like crazy. I'm just like, whoa. And it's like, people would think, oh, it's old school. Believe me. No. It, it's like. His game, his game would in, still translate. Exactly. It's ball screen. I'm like, literally. It's what like, it is now. Space you, the floor. Exa- I'm like, literally, that's so crazy. I'm like, I'm super thankful for him and like. You know, Mike and um, David, because they were also, like, worked me out mm-hmm. and, like, um, literally helped me become here. Like, his family was huge. Like, you know, always welcoming to the warehouse, playing Sunday ball and all the time. So, like, I'll, you know, I'll give him a little shout-out because you I should deserve it. And last thing. So, like, going into these – are they doing full workouts this year? Uh, the dra- I think they the will. Draft? I think they will. Just make sure you're in the best shape of your life. Mm-hmm. You already know that. But yeah. you you'll you'll understand a college shape. And a pro shape, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Make yeah. sure you're in the best shape of your life, and then just you know, just start repping, like just fucking rep, rep, rep. And then when you go into these, you already have the mindset, but it's killer, yeah. You have to because yeah, everybody's who because they'll bring in, you know, maybe a guy even with you on the board, yep. and then two other guys that aren't, and those two other guys are gonna fucking Dogs. try to cut your nuts exactly. off, right? You know what exactly. I'm saying? 100%. So it's make sure you're in the best shape you've ever been in, which yeah. is, it's not hard, but like you, you do your workout, you do your 16s after mm-hmm. you do four of them, mm-hmm. you know, that's what we used to do. And then you, yeah. you, you get done. You're like, man, I could have been in so much better exactly. shape for yeah. last year. Like, you'll it see sucks. it. You'll yeah. laugh. You'll laugh. Yeah. You're like, Oh man, I had a whole nother gear. Yeah. Um, but best of luck to you, man. Thank I appreciate you, man. you coming on. Thanks for having me. We're going to watch. We're going to be cheering for you. Like I said, sure. come back, man, come back for a week. I know you guys get busy yeah, schedules, sure. but foster the younger guys a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of, that's my only complaint about mm-hmm. the, the newer generation yeah. guys. You know what I'm saying? I'll try but to change that for sure. Change it, man. So, sure. all right, Joel. Thanks, Appreciate man. it, man. Thanks for having yep, me. Yep, of course. The Perimeter with Adam Morrison is brought to you in partnership with Speak Studios and Mercedes of Spokane.